Welcome to the Flight Club Podcast, a woman's guide to leaning out. We give you a behind-the-scenes look at business launch and growth through the stories of successful female entrepreneurs. Here's your host, Felina Hansen, founder and CEO of Hera Hub. Hello and welcome. I am excited to interview today Ronnie McGuire. She is the founder of Shine On and Glow. She's a former Wall Street executive turned business and mindset coach. Ronnie started her journey as a coder in New York's financial industry and eventually managed the development of investment management systems for Merrill Lynch, the American Stock Exchange, S&P, and the Vanguard Group. Ronnie now combines her business knowledge with her powerful, intuitive gifts, motivating others to take action and follow their dreams in life and work. She helps her clients create a plan for their business and lives using process a, a process she calls motifesting, which I'm super excited to talk about. Uh, Ronnie's clients learn how to not only talk the talk, but walk the walk. Welcome to the show today, Ronnie. Hi, Felina. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, we are going to get into your business and manifesting uh, here in a little bit. But first, let's kind of start at the beginning. Take us back. I know you're originally from New York. Uh, take us along your career path. We got it. We got a little sense of it in your introduction. Um, but what 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 prompted you to start your career on Wall Street? Sure. Well, when I was a teenager, I got it in my head that I wanted to be a businesswoman one day, that I saw myself working on Wall Street. And I'm not sure where that came from. It just was a, a desire inside of me that I, I felt driven towards. And when I went to college, I majored in economics, and that helped me along that path. Uh, something I'll talk about later, I really believe in the crystal clear clear vision it is what helps get you to your goals. So I also had very supportive parents, which both my mother and my father really believed in, uh, in me and what I could do. And the, it, the fact that I was a woman, uh, which is something we'll talk about too, never impacted uh, what their dreams and goals were for me too, you know, the support behind me. So I, you know, went out into the world just believing, did it matter? I could be in a male dominated industry, uh, you know, I could get paid, I could do what I wanted. And so I kind of, you know, started with that mindset. <laughs> and, so I, I want to pause before we get into your career, because sure. this is something we have in common. I think it's a bit ironic. So I grew up here in California on the central coast of California, small town, like not New York, not hustle bustle, but it's so interesting. I also had a vision uh, I'd say in high school and even into college that I wanted to work on Wall Street, like the trading floor and the excitement of that. You know, I had that in my mind, didn't do it, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I love that that was your vision and you made it happen. Yes, uh, I, you know, I did actually even end up on the trading floor at the American Stock Exchange. So we can get into that. But <laughs> I, I started I minored in computer science, I guess a funny part of the story is my parents thought I should go into computer science, which was very forward thinking at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I dabbled in it, but it really wasn't my passion or my drive. And that's how I ended up with economics as a degree, but I did minor in computer science. And so Funny enough, you know, sometimes our parents do get in our head, I guess I started as a coder. Uh, mm -hmm. That was my first job. And I learned how to, you know, from the bottom up, develop the systems that the traders would use. And so I started there, but quickly because I, you know, I love people and I am a great planner and I have a great vision. I quickly moved into management. So by the time I was 25, I was at the American Stock Exchange and in charge of uh, they're redoing their whole order processing system. And because I was so young at the time, I think I didn't even know 
the how big that was <laughs> when I look back on it. And so I was really thrown into it. And sometimes when you don't know what you don't know, it's a good thing. So I just yeah. dove in and uh, I was just telling the story the other day. It's kind of funny when I showed up the first day at work, I was there 730, you know, bright eyed, ready to go. And there was only one person there. And uh, he was sitting in his corner office and he was getting ready for retirement. He was the head of the whole department and he was ticking off his days for retirement. And he was surprised that I showed up. There was no desk for me. <laughs> there was, uh, you know, I had a team on an org chart, but nobody was actually reporting to me. So I literally built myself an office there. I built my team one by one. Uh, I, I chose new technology for the American Stock Exchange and I helped them build a new order processing system. So I went quickly, like I said, from coding, but it helped me to, to start there to understand the people who I was managing what they were doing. Uh, from there, I, I had a few other jobs, uh, you know, Standard and Poor's. Um, and, and then I landed at the Vanguard Group, which was my dream job. I got a little disillusioned along the way because a lot of Wall Street is very kind of rough and tumble, obviously male dominated, uh, very much sometimes about just making the wealthy wealthier. And so I am a very, you know, I care about making a difference in the world too. I always came from that point of view, although I didn't think that meant I couldn't get compensated for what I did. So I kind of put it out there that I wanted to, uh, you know, to help people. And I wasn't sure that Wall Street was the right place for me anymore. But funny enough, you know, that you, you put something out there and the universe listens. And so that's what led me to the Van Vanguard group because they are structured as close to a nonprofit as you can be as a bit for a, a large business. And their mission is to keep expense ratios as low as possible to really help investors. The investor is definitely the hero of the story there. And so it took everything I learned in that rough and tumble environment in the American Stock Exchange, which, you know, I could probably talk for, you know, 20 minutes or more about that itself. Uh, but it, it just, it took everything I learned and I was able to bring that, they needed that. They needed what my skill set there to help bring them to the next level. And I needed them because I needed kind of my, my idealism back, you know, that, that I could help people doing what I did. So that's how I, I traveled through that. And Vanguard was just my favorite place to work. I'm still an investor there. And I, I love the people. And funny enough, some, you know, the person who's the CEO now is someone who I was a principal with there at the time. So people love that company and stay there for a long time. So it was such a positive experience. But all of those th those experiences laid the groundwork for where I am today and what I'm doing. And it really motivated me to, to help women. I spent my <laughs> earlier career mostly <laughs> helping men. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, talk about a male dominated <laughs> industry, especially at the time. Oh, absolutely. So I was often um, only the woman, the only woman in the room, you know, yeah. and um, other sometimes there was an admin support person. And so I really, you know, I really, you definitely had to have your voice. And I had no problem. Again, I feel like was, I was lucky my parents kind of gave me the, the wind behind my sails there that mm -hmm. I had no problem uh, standing toe to toe, having a voice. And I was lucky. There were, there were some men, you know, I had my me too moments, uh, mm -hmm. but I, there were some men who were very helpful, supported, supportive and mentored me. And so, uh, you know, but I, I, I was always disappointed. And re more recently, I read a book about kind of the brotopia of Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and was disappointed to learn that, you know, women have, have in technology has actually gone down since I did that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I know it, it's it's frightening uh, because back then, like I said, I was often the only woman in the room. So I, you know, am really excited now to take everything I've learned. You know, the the gifts my parents gave me too, just having the ability to ask for what I want, to believe that I, you know, even we I, we've talked about this before. You know, that we should earn money. We shouldn't be afraid to ask for what we're worth. We should be compensated. We should feel empowered. We should feel aligned with the gifts that we have and that we're offering it to the world. And so I am so excited now. And I've just pivoted into this in the last couple of years, taking this and helping women. I've already helped over 100 women, either one on one or in group workshops and programs, uh, start finding their voice, finding their confidence, 
teaching them real business strategies and everything I've learned. I mean, just, you know, like I am so excited to share that now with uh, everybody that I am working with or come in contact with. I love it. Awesome. Well, before we get into your business, we'll definitely spend some time there. I want to ask some questions based on what you just mentioned. Sure. Um, so love Vanguard, also a client to Vanguard, a very big fan of <laughs> keeping management fees as low as possible to grow your wealth. Um, so you were at Vanguard for four years and then yes. I know you took some time off. Um, and I want to, I want to hone in on that for a moment. Um, and I talked to so many women and I know you do too, Ronnie, that come to this point in their career where they feel like they have to choose, Right family and over career, or, you know, how, how do I manage and juggle all this? And, and a lot of women at this point do decide to step out of the workforce. That is becoming more and more of an issue or companies are seeing that it's more and more of an issue. And how can they not lose this amazing talent pool, these resources, these incredible people they have in their company to leave, to, to step out of the workforce for a while and, and spend time with family was there anything Vanguard could have done or any employer, if you had to advise an employer, if they were listening to say, okay, how can it, how can I create a situation where I don't lose this person and create this opportunity for some balance in their life? Right. Well, first I wanted to say Vanguard was pretty forward thinking at the time. So they were as good as it gets at that mm -hmm. time. I felt, however, as a principal, you were expected to show up at a certain level. And it would, I do, I did feel that I had to choose combination of things. Also, my husband had a career, you know, I, we lived kind of in between our jobs and uh, both of us couldn't still work at that level, uh, keep everything that we had done. And, you know, me in particular, because we decided I was going to be the one who was going to stay home and uh, do a good job in both places. You know, uh, I felt divided. So that is a really good question. I think that one, you know, we have to recognize everything it takes to get to that point in your career, to become a principal, to have the responsibility I did, the contributions I was making to that organization. And to say, hey, even having someone in that role, even if they do have to dial back a little bit, and I believe I definitely could do this, even if I had to do it at a little more remotely, which I think we're, we're learning about that now for other reasons, but offering that and real, realizing that the contribu contribution won't be lessened because you have children or have another focus in your life. It's just the time management might have to get tighter or they have to get a little bit more flexible in what it looks like to you know, be at a high level in an organization or at any level really in an organization so that we don't feel like we have to make a choice that, with other, that all of a sudden our work isn't devalued because we've become a mother. I think that's what happens. You know, Oh, you can't possibly do both. Well, I would challenge employers to say, yes, we can. <laughs> and in fact, I help, that's one of the things I do. I help a lot of entrepreneurs, but I also help women who are inside of big corporations and they, uh, you know, I help them with the work life balance and being able to show up in both places because it is possible. I'm not going to say it's always easy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, again, I'm saying work life balance, but another term I've started using is creating harmony because mm -hmm. sometimes we can't balance equally between things, but we want there, there to be a harmony existing between our work and our personal life. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I like the phrase work-life integration, right? Yes. How, oh, how, I love can we, how can we bring these things together? So we don't feel like we're, we're two separate people being one thing at home and one thing at work. And you're right. Uh, you know, the, the, the way we work now has definitely changed, which is exciting. And I think will open new paths for women in corporate. Um, so what brought you out to the West coast? Well, what brought me here is my husband's job because I was taking some time off and actually it was his work-life balance that brought us here because we were living in Pennsylvania at the time. He commuted to Manhattan, uh, you know, and work got crazy, you know, and so in some ways 
the pandemic and having to do this remote work and the, the changing of that has been a blessing because he could not keep that up physically. And in fact, it, it led to a very scary situation where, you know, from the stress and everything else he did, he ruptured his Achilles tendon, which I think it was all related. And he ended up developing some pulmonary embolisms and he ended up almost dying. You know, if he had gone to bed that night, he wouldn't have woke up in the morning. Mm -hmm. I, you know, brought him to, I convinced him, you know, it's mm -hmm. a lot of times we get in that situation, definitely not thinking clearly, but I got him to the hospital. Thankfully he was in the ICU for a few days and uh, you know, it was a wake up call because he made it. And we realized this wasn't a way of living even for, you know, forget about male, female, it's not good for men either. Right. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't good for our family. And, uh, and you were, you know, I do the vision board workshops. You saw my most powerful vision board ever. That was <laughs> stemmed from there, you know, at the center of that was work life, you know, our family in balance, you know, having him more in our lives. My kids didn't even know him, you know, he didn't get home till nine o'clock at night. So that's part of why we decided, Hey, we need to go somewhere to change our family life, you know, everything, uh, just have more of a life, see each other. And so he, you know, it took time to find it, but he found a company out here in California and La Jolla that was a great fit for his skills and it was great for our family. And so that was the beginning of actually a really wonderful phase of our family's life because you know, again, I was at home. However, we could talk about that too. You know, I didn't, I was never, kind of doing nothing. I always had to find sure. a place to channel my energy, <laughs> but we came here uh, and it was, it was great. It was good for both of us and for our family and for our kids. And, and they always say it wasn't until we came here that they got to know him. Yeah. So that's what brought us here. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, so you have uh, been working for yourself for a number of years, but you founded Shine On and Glow about four years ago. Mm -hmm. Again, would you share, you know, what, what is the focus of the business? What do you do? Sure. I am a business and mindset coach and manifestation coach. It all ties together and it comes from that manifesting method. So as I was saying, you know, while I was not working, quote unquote, because as we know, when you're home with your kids, you are working, but I also did a lot of different things. I, you know, learned how to play tennis and, and captained a team that went to nationals. I, you know, volunteered for Rady's Children's Hospital here in San Diego and helped them raise over $2 million. I was always a leader in the community. And the reason I bring that up is because I learned a lot doing those things. When I was on Wall Street, I was very focused on technology and strategic planning and implementing systems. The work that I did that was volunteer work or raising my children or being part of the community, I learned other things that I brought to Shine On and Glow about motivating people, you know, in a team situation or when you have a volunteer organization that you're running. So I brought all of those things together and I was, you know, approaching a point in time where my kids were going to leave the nest and I knew that I would want to do something again. Another one of my dreams on my vision board was to be an entrepreneur. And I always even had that entrepreneurial spirit when I was in a corporation. When I look back at it, I always kind of carved out my own kind of niche and way of doing things. And I somehow got away with it <laughs> in, in the corporate world. And I, I kind of ha always had that vibe. So I, I thought, well, you know, people ask me about my vision boards. They asked me how I accomplished the things I had in my life. And I, and that's when I sat down and thought about, well, what, what do I do? What's my process? And that's how I came up with the manifesting method, because every day I wake up and find my motivation in all different ways. Uh, I, I create a vision and that's the I in manifesting. It's imagining. I am always daydreaming, always coming up with what is the next big thing I want to do. And then I get focused. You know, once you have a clear vision, it's all about honing in on that and not letting anything distract you from that. And I, I always tell people, look back in your life when there was something you accomplished that was big, you'll realize that nothing could stop you, the naysayers or you know anyone around you, you just get that laser focus. And then you start taking action either like, because you're literally making lists of things to do or it just happens because you know there's this energy behind you that you are gonna make this vision and you're going to take it and bring it into the world. So I came up with, well, that's what I do. Whenever I tackle something new, or I want to do something big. These are the steps I go through and they happen at different points at different times. And it doesn't mean that I never have 
a time where I'm, you know, needing help in one of those areas. But I kind of have learned to keep myself going, keep myself on track and keep accomplishing these things. And, and I wanted to teach that to other people. And so that's how I came up with the concept of shine on and glow. And so I came up with that idea. I came up with motifesting. I trademarked them both. And one of my dreams, I'll put it out there right now, is to have motifesting appear in the dictionary one day, which I know it is happening. <laughs> so uh, I started off, though, and this is interesting as a journey of an entrepreneur, uh, thinking that I would do a lifestyle blog and that I would be kind of an influencer and a motivational speaker and give workshops. But then I learned what that meant. And I found out that meant I was going to have to be an advertising agency, which that's not what I wanted to do. That took mm -hmm. me away from helping people and helping people grow their dreams and businesses. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. And how do you work with your clients, individual groups? Yeah. So now what happened was, as I told my story, people asked me to be their business coach. And so I started off do, taking on one-on-one -on -one clients and I do business uh, coaching, mindset coaching, real strategy. I actually help people really implement their plans, which I think think differentiates me a bit. I also do group coaching. So last year for the first time, I launched um, Jumpstart your business, which was my first group coaching program. It went amazing. I wasn't sure what I liked that, but I did. The people loved each other. I had people from, I had a woman from Germany join. Uh, I have, you know, who's a PhD and the head of uh, technical innovation at her company. And then I had a, a spiritual healer and yoga instructor from San Diego. And, you know, it kind of, it all came together. People come together when you put it out there. And I thought, how is this going to work? Well, it, it was amazing. And believe it or not, those two became like being BFFs within the program. So it, it taught me a lot to doing that program. And I'm super excited this year to keep growing that. I'm going to do Jumpstart Your Business again coming up in February and I'm going to grow it. And, and I also realized after doing that, that the next step would be creating a leadership mastermind because as I worked with these women, as they grew their confidence, as they started really dialing in to the specifics of their business, they felt aligned. They had, they were more confident in their pricing and their offerings. Then they're ready to really step into their leadership. So uh, that will be the next step for me as well in terms of group coaching. I also am a guest speaker. I've been hired to give workshops uh, to other people's programs. So I love doing that as well. And because of the success I've had, one of my clients works for Apple. And like I said, I have a passion for women in STEM and I've helped her so much. She's been with me for a year now and she just signed on for another six months. This year, I think I will try and work with maybe one corporation uh, to help them build, uh, you know, help them with this whole, what we've been talking about, women in business, letting them have a voice still, it's male dominated, you know, unfortunately. So helping them figure out how do they retain more women and how do we, you know, like I help the, the women through their career inside. I call myself their secret weapon, you know, because I've learned so much. I've I know so much about kind of the, the, the way to translate between the way they may be thinking and what if our management wants to hear. So I'm help, able to help them upward manage, outward manage, maybe even start changing the dialogue around women in the workplace. So I've, you know, I'm working on all those different things and I'm so excited for 2022. Awesome. Well, I am excited for this year as well and excited for all the amazing things you're doing and uh, happy to have you in the Hera Hub community. Oh, I'm so excited to be here as well. I really am enjoying it so much. And all the women that I've been meeting and already learning from, it's, it's an amazing uh, place that you've created. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, I have a website, which is, which is shineonandglow.com. I also am on Instagram at shine on and glow. So I would love for you. You can go through my website. You can find my social media there. You can shoot me an email. You can even hop on a call with me. I love meeting new people and talking and, and hearing all about your stories. So looking forward to it. Love it. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Ronnie. Thanks, Felina. Thank you for joining this week's episode of Flight Club, sponsored by Hera Hub. We look forward to sharing more success stories with you soon.